Hello, my name is Tomotaka Kuwahara. Uh, I'm sorry for giving a talk online due to the coronavirus uh, infection. Uh, it's a great pleasure for me to have this opportunity to give a presentation in QIP 2023. Today's presentation title is Optimal Light Cone and Digital Quantum Simulation of Interacting Bosons. Uh, in this work, uh, we have solved one of the long-standing problems, the Lee Robinson bound in both Hubbard Hamiltonians. It's a collaboration with Tan Van Biu and Keiji Saito at Keio University. The paper was uploaded to archive in June 2022. Okay, so I first show what the Lee Robinson bound is. Well, roughly speaking, it characterizes the fundamental speed limit to generate correlations by quantum anybody dynamics. From the relativity theory, uh, it is well known fact that the speed of information propagation never exceeds the speed of light, so the range of information propagation is restricted in the light cone region. In non-relativistic quantum systems, there is no rigorous light cone, but in quantum anybody systems, uh, we can still define an effective light cone. Uh, this is a setup of the Lee Robinson bound. I consider the time evolution of uh, OIT and consider the approximation of this operator onto a local region. Here the I bracket L is the ball region center at the side I with the radius L. Uh, the fundamental question is whether OIT is well approximated by this local approximation. We expect that as long as the time t is small, we obtain a good approximation for small l. Uh, the Lee Robinson bound gives the general answer to this fundamental question. The Lee Robinson bound is quite general and can be derived independently of the system details. For example, uh, for the Hamiltonian with two-body interactions, only the two basic conditions are assumed. The first one is the short rangeness of the interactions. The condition is relaxed to the exponential decaying uh, interactions. The second condition is that the on-site energy is finite. Uh, this mathematically means that the Hamiltonian is locally bounded. These two conditions are typically satisfied in the quantum fermionic systems and the quantum spin system with a small spin number, for example. Under these two conditions, we can always ensure that the speed of information propagation is finitely bounded. The Lee Robinson bound is usually characterized by the commutator uh, between two operators, one which is given by the time evolved operators. Uh, it gives the upper bound on the norm of this commutator by this form. The commutator norm decays exponentially with the distance uh, beyond the Vt. By using this inequality for the commutator, we can also obtain that the local approximation for OIT is very good if R is sufficiently larger than Vt. In this way, the time evolved operator OIT is well approximated inside an effective light cone. The effective light cone is now characterized by R is equal to Vt and the error of the approximation decays rapidly when the radius R is larger than Vt. I have shown that the Lee Robinson bound can be derived by using these two conditions. But the conditions often break down and we have a natural question of what happens when one of the conditions breaks down. In particular, we are interested in the form of the effective light cone. When the first condition breaks down, the interaction becomes a long range. In this case, the form of the effective light cone strongly depends on the decay rate of the interaction. Uh, through recent progress in these three years, uh, various kinds of uh, universal properties have been revealed. On the other hand, a typical example of breaking the second condition is the interacting boson systems. Until now, the Lee Robinson bound in boson systems has been an extremely challenging problem. Unfortunately, such boson systems are now ubiquitous in cold atom experiments. In this talk, uh, the breakdown of the second condition is our main target. The most important class of interacting boson systems is the bose hubbard model. Actually, the first experiment in 2012 to observe the effective light cone uh, from the Lee Robinson bound was achieved in Bose-Hubbard model. Nevertheless, 
the Lee Robinson bound in the Bose Harvard model has not been established so far. This slide shows the setup of the system. Uh, we consider the generalized Bose Harvard model uh, in this form. Now, lattice systems with finite dimension, I mean capital D, are considered. The first term in the Hamiltonian is the free boson terms, and the second term describes the boson boson interactions. The operator ni hat is the boson number operator on the site i, and the function f is an arbitrary function for the boson number operator. By choosing the function f appropriately, uh, this Hamiltonian reduces to the standard Bose Hubbard model. For the Bose Hubbard model, we can define the one side Hamiltonian uh, like this form. Then, if uh, capital N bosons concentrate on the side I, the local energy is roughly proportional to the square of N. Our goal is to establish the Lee Robinson bound for this uh, generalized Bose Hubbard type Hamiltonians. In considering the Lip Robinson bound for the Bose Hubbard type Hamiltonians, uh, we need to consider two kinds of different problems. The first one is the speed of the boson transport, as shown in this picture. Uh, let's consider a quantum state where bosons concentrate on a particular region. Then we are interested in how long it will take to transport the bosons to another region. Mathematically, we aim to obtain the operator inequality like this form. Here, n hat x is the boson number operator in the region capital X, and the error epsilon rst decays to zero in the limit of l to infinity. The second one is the speed of the total information propagation. This characterizes the Lee Robinson light cone. Mathematically, we aim to ident identify the speed of operator spreading. The approximation error is characterized by the difference between the true time evolution and the time evolution by the subset Hamiltonian. The first problem and the second problem are closely related. In tackling the second problem, we at least identify the first problem. By solving the first problem, we can identify the boson number distribution after the time evolution. Then, by using the restriction on the boson numbers distribution, we can tr truncate the boson numbers with uh, efficiency guarantees. We use the effective Hamiltonian in this truncated boson number and derive the Lee Robinson bound. Then, the flow of the strategy can be summarized in this slide. We first identify the speed of boson transport. Then we can obtain the upper bound for the boson number distribution after time evolution. By using it, we can truncate the boson number at each site, which allows us to construct the effective Hamiltonian with the bounded local energies. Finally, using the effective Hamiltonian, we can derive the Lee Robinson bound, which reaches the second goal. I mean the speed of total information propagation. I want to show these processes in more detail in the following. In the following slide, I will show the previous results. First of all, the most general and strongest result relevant to boson particle transport was given by Schiff, Harrison, Osborne, and Isaac in 2011. There, uh, they consider the diffusion of the initially concentrated bosons in the vacuum. Note that all the bosons sit on a particular region, say capital X. In this setup, the boson density uh, away from the initial region X decays exponentially with the distance. Their result implies that the boson number operator may generally obey the Lee Robinson bound with a linear light cone in a more general setup. Unfortunately, the condition that the bosons initially concentrate on the vacuum is a very critical condition and no generalization has been known. For example, it is very hard to generalize it to, for example, the MOT state where a finite number of bosons 
in the seat on one side. Then, can one prove a similar inequality in a more realistic setup? On this point, Farpin, Lem, and Shigao achieved a generalization. They considered a macroscopic number of bosons transport from a region X to another region Y. Here, the macroscopic number means that the uh, order of total boson number in the system. Then, they proved that the transport of the boson should have a finite speed. The condition of a macroscopic number seems to be a bit strong, but in considering the one-dimensional system, it gives the meaning for upper bound. On the total information propagation, I mean the Lee Robinson bound, the first qualitative progress was achieved by Wang and Hazard. They derived the Lee Robinson velocity, which is proportional to the square root of the total boson number. Original Lee Robinson bound gives the Lee Robinson velocity proportional to the total boson number, so it achieves uh, qualitative, imp uh, qualitative improvement, but it is still useless in practical uses, for example, in the thermodynamic limit. If the initial state is a steady state with low boson density, we can prove the Lee Robinson bound in this form. From this bound, one can identify the speed of uh, propagation by a perturbation to steady state, I mean, the low zero. In the very recent paper, uh, Ing and Lucas improved our result to the linear light cone. Here they proved the Lee Robinson bound like this form. In this bound, the average value of the commutator was considered instead of the trace norm. So this bound cannot capture the total information uh, transfer, but as an advantage, in one dimensional system, the condition of the steady state can be removed. I have to emphasize that uh, proving the Lee Robinson bound in terms of the choice norm is critical in developing efficiency guaranteed algorithms uh, for simulating quantum dynamics. For example, applying the Ha Hastings Cotterlo algorithm to the dynamics of uh, uh, both Hubbard time Hamiltonian. Okay, so now I want to show our main result. We have identified the optimal forms of the effective light cone by the dynamics uh, of uh, both Hubbard type Hamiltonian. First, we obtain this inequality for the speed of boson particle transport. Here, the inequality is characterized in the form of operator inequality, so the result is applicable to arbitrary quantum states. Second, we derive the Lee Robinson bound for the both Hubbard type Hamiltonian in this form. Here, the initial state is assumed to satisfy the low boson density condition at initial time. This condition implies that the probability distribution of the boson number at each site decays sub-exponentially at the initial time. Without this condition, the Lee Robinson velocity can be arbitrarily large as the boson density increases. So this kind of low boson density condition cannot be removed in deriving a mi meaningful Lee Robinson bound in general. I show the schematic picture of the effective light cone from our result. The particle transport has a finite speed, and hence the light cone is linear. On the other hand, total information transfer has a non-linear light cone in high dimensions. In other words, there exists a case where the information propagation is accelerating. I also note that there exist quantum dynamics that achieve the, this form of nonlinear light cone, I mean the R to the power of capital D. In this sense, further improvement is in principle impossible unless we impose additional as uh, assumptions to the system. I want to show an explicit example of such acceleration in the following slide. Also, this acceleration cannot be observed in fermion or spin system, so this point unveils the clear difference between bosons and fermions. One of the crucial applications 
uh, we can estimate the gate complexity of the quantum dynamics. It is an essential task of the quantum computer to simulate the quantum anybody dynamics. And the gate complexity problem asks how many elementary quantum gates are sufficient to implement the quantum dynamics. Here, the elementary quantum gates mean C0, Adamo, and phase shift gate, for example. By combining our new result with the existing simulation technique, we can prove that the gate complexity is given by this form. Here, the capital M means the system size, and the capital D means the spatial dimension. Okay, so finally, I want to show the quantum state transfer protocol that achieves the effective light cone that is proportional to d t to the power of d. The protocol consists of two steps. The first step is the correction of bosons onto the information path. The second step is the implementation of the C0 operation on the information path. I want to show these two steps in detail. In this slide, I consider two dimensional system for simplicity. The initial state is now given by the MOT state with one boson at each side. The first step is the collection of bosons onto the information path, which is now given by the ladder region. We take half of the total time for this uh, procedure. In this step, we send the bosons to the one-dimensional region, uh, which we call the information path. It is highlighted by the purple region. The Hamiltonian necessary for this step is to achieve the asymmetric transport of particle between two sides. Here, the left side has n bosons, and the right, height, right side has one boson. We want to achieve the time evolution that makes this state to zero bosons at left side and the n plus 1 bosons at right side. By using the bose hubbard interaction, it is possible by a time of order 1. Then, after half of the total time, n bar t bosons concentrate on the information path. This n bar t is now proportional to t to the power of d minus 1. In the second step, I consider the implementation of the C0 operation on the information path. First, I encode the qubit for the state on the two sides. If both of the two sides have uh, n bar t bosons, the state is encoded as zero state. But if the left side has n bar t minus 1 bosons and the right side has n bar t minus 1 bosons, the state is encoded as one state. Then, the C0 operation is implemented in these pictures if the state on the J-1 column is given by the zero state. There is no hopping between the two sides on the J column. On the other hand, if the state on the J-1 column is given by the one state, there exists a boson hopping between two sides in the J column. In this way, we can achieve the C0 operation. At first sight, uh, the Hamiltonian to achieve this step seems to be highly non-trivial, but this simple Hamiltonian achieves the C0 operation by appropriately choosing the time. Also, the necessary time to implement the C0 operation in roughly proportional to the inverse of the n bar t. So, using the latter half of the time, one can implement uh, t over 2 times uh, n bar t c0 operations on the information path. This also implies that the effecti effective light cone is proportional to uh, the t to the power of d. I will summarize the talk. We consider the interacting boson system which is given by the generalized both Hubbard type model. For this model, the one site energy is unbounded and the system does not satisfy the standard conditions for the Lee Robinson bound. For this model, 
we have identified the effective light cone both for the boson particle transport and the total information propagation. The obtained light cone is optimal up to a logarithmic factor, as shown in this picture. Uh, the speed of the boson transport is finite, while the speed of the total information propagation can accelerate in high, dim high dimensions as t to the power of b. As application, we have identified the gate complexity to simulate the dynamics of a quantum computer. The sufficient number of the elementary gate is now proportional to n times t to the power of d plus 1 times some logarithmic factors. The interesting and ongoing future direction is the experimental observation of the nonlinear light cone in bosonic Lee Robinson band, which will be possible in the cold atom e experiments. That's all of my presentation. Thank you for listening.